Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to take a look at the Alpha Centurion Ultra Linux-based laptop from Alpha. I did a previous video on another model they offer, the Centurion Nano, and it's a lot smaller than this, as you can see. The Ultra offers a bigger screen and a better GPU. At 15.6 inches, it's about the perfect size for a laptop. On one side of the Ultra, we get two USB 3.0 ports, a full-size HDMI port, and a USB Type-C port. Moving over to the other side, we get the power jack, two USB 2.0 ports, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and a full-size SD card slot. Plenty of ventilation on the bottom. There's one fan that cools the CPU and GPU, and it blows all the air out of the back. But we also have some other vents just to let any extra heat escape. The Ultra is fully upgradable except for the CPU. You can replace the battery, the hard drive, the M.2 SSD, the RAM, and the Wi-Fi module if you ever need to upgrade. They offer two CPU variants, the i5-7200U and the i7-7500U at 3.5 GHz. Now I have the i7-7500U here, and it does come with a backlit keyboard. I want to go over the specs of the model that I have here. The CPU is an i7-7500U dual core with four threads up to 3.5 GHz. For the GPU, we have the NVIDIA 940MX plus the Intel HD 620, so you can switch between the two. The one I have here came preloaded with 16 GB of DDR4 RAM. As for storage, I have a 256 GB M.2 SSD and a mechanical 1 TB hard drive. These are both user replaceable and upgradable. The screen is a 15.6 inch 1080p LCD display, Wi-Fi, Intel 802.11b G N and AC, and it runs Alpha OS, but you can install any other operating system on this unit if you'd like to. The body is fully constructed of aluminum. It looks really nice, and I love the form factor of this thing. All right, with the specs out of the way, let's see how this thing performs. I'm gonna move over to the operating system now. I'm gonna run a few benchmarks, check out a few games, and just have a look at the operating system itself. So here we are all booted up. In my previous video on the Nano, I tested a lot of stuff and I'm actually gonna test the same things on this PC because it's not that much more expensive. I assume that the Ultra is gonna perform much better in some of the tasks that I'm gonna be doing here because it has that NVIDIA 940 MX GPU built in. First thing I did was run a Geekbench 4. This is using the same Intel i7-7500U that the Nano was running, so I expected kind of similar results here. It's not until we get into GPU intensive tasks that we'll see a big boost in performance on the Ultra versus the Nano. So for the single core, we scored a 4,284, multi-core, 5,772. This is that i7, it's one processor, two cores, four threads. It's gonna get stuff done. So we're running the same Alpha OS as the Nano. We have the App Center here, so if you want to go and download something, it's probably already here. If not, you can always use a PPA to install. Pretty much anything that works on Ubuntu will work on this. I did test a few games on the Nano, but I wanted to test Rocket League on the Ultra. Let's go ahead and start that up, see how this works. And we're sitting pretty much steady at 60 FPS. That NVIDIA GPU really does make a difference, and the Ultra's not much more expensive than the Nano. I was gonna test video playback, but seeing that it worked great on the Nano, I'm sure it's gonna work even better on the Ultra. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip that test. 
If you want to watch Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, Kodi, this computer is definitely going to do it for you. Now I want to test out some CPU slash GPU intensive applications. These are emulators. Now I'm going to be emulating the PS2, PSP, and the Nintendo GameCube. First up, we're going to go with a PS2 emulator. I'm using PC SX2 1.4.0. I'm going to be starting up Tekken 5. FPS is listed at the top of the screen. This is only the PAL version of Tekken 5, so it's only going to run at 50 FPS. But if it runs steady at 50, the NTSC version will probably run at 60 just fine. Round one. Fight. <laughs> You win. Get ready for the next battle. Very smooth emulation. Seems to be running very well. There are some games that you will have trouble with. And it's not due to the hardware here, it's due to the emulator itself. Like Ratchet and Clank has a lot of visual glitches, but it runs at full speed. It's just unplayable because a lot of the walls and stuff disappear, and that's due to how the emulator is set up right now. Let's go ahead and test something else. Next up, we're going to be testing Dolphin 5.0. This is a GameCube slash Wii emulator. And I'm going to launch Soul Calibur 2. This is my go-to test game for this emulator. Now, one of the reasons I don't have it full screen right now is because the FPS is listed at the top of the bar here. If you want to go full screen, you can. I just don't have it set up that way right now so we can see how well the game is running. And this game should run at 60 FPS. I'm pretty sure this Ultra is going to handle it just fine. And the Wii emulator is very, very good. So there are tons of games that work just fine in the emulator. There are a few that have troubles, but there are hundreds of Wii games that will be fully playable on the Ultra. And Soul Calibur 2 is one of them. Let's go ahead and test PSP out. So for the emulator, I'm using PPSSPP, and the hardest game to emulate for PSP is God of War Chains of Olympus and Midnight Club Dove Edition. I'm going to start God of War Chains of Olympus. We're going to get into some gameplay. I got a good feeling it's going to run at full speed. It should run at 60. As you can see up in the top right hand corner, we're sitting steady at 60 FPS. If it handles God of War, it's going to handle most every PSP game, as long as it's compatible with the PPSSPP emulator. There are a few games that aren't compatible at all, so they're not going to run. But as long as the game is listed as working with this emulator, you should get full performance out of it using the Ultra. So the Centurion Ultra is definitely more powerful than the Nano, and that's due to the NVIDIA GPU that's built in. One of the reasons I test these emulators on these machines is because it does take a lot of CPU and GPU power to emulate these systems. If you're looking to switch over from Windows to Linux, Alpha OS is a great operating system to start with. If you need a Linux machine for photo editing, video editing, watching movies, browsing the web, this is a great option for you. If you want to get into some gaming, you can also do that with the Ultra. Another big reason a lot of people get into Linux is compiling other operating systems on Linux, like Android. And this machine will definitely handle something like that. You could go ahead and install Windows or any other Linux distribution on one of these machines if you'd like to. 
They're fully upgradable except for the CPU. You can upgrade the RAM, the hard drive, the SSD. I love the form factor and the all aluminum construction is beautiful. If you guys are interested in learning more about Alpha OS and the machines they offer, I'm going to leave a link to the Alpha store down below. You can go check out what they got. This is their highest end machine right here. This is the Ultra. They offer the Nano, the Lightbook, and they also have a Lightbox, which is a small desktop PC. It's pretty powerful for what it is. I actually have one here and I plan on doing a video in a few days. If you guys could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.